Yeah, but many people would say, well, that's wonderful, except that you were, re you were living, and he was living, in a rigidly segregated world that, that really did not often allow it was a, things. Well, first of all, it was a segregated world. It was not a rigidly segregated world. I lived on Dan I mean, in, in Danville, Virginia. I grew up on Ross Street. Our address was 215, and we lived in the second block, you know, the 200 block. And from 215 down to 315, 415, 400 block, that was all, all black. The 100 block of Raw Street was white lived. And, the, uh, and in that, up, up about the 100, I don't remember the exact address, one of the white families there had a shoe repair place in his basement. And so, when we had uh, our shoes that needed repair, we would go up and take the shoes for the repair. When they were ready, his children came down and brought the children, brought the, brought the shoes for us and collected the money. When my mother died suddenly in 1954, when we, when I, oh, none of us were there when we got word we were there that that night. We flew in from from wherever we were. That our dining room table was full of food and fruit and anything you would want that the people on that one hundred block of Danville had brought. That was the kind of the schools were segregated, but anyway, the grocery store where most of the shopping was done, we didn't go to the market. I mean, it was delivered. And they, they just came in the house, and they knew where to deliver it. And then when the bill would come, my father would, or my mother would pay for it. And so there was the, the, uh, the rigid, there was segregation, but we, did, we didn't call it rigid. Now, the, the transportation, the streetcar, that was you riding, riding the bus in, in the back. But, of course, no, we weren't going to do that. So we walked. But it was... We walked to school anyway, so if you had to go down shopping, you're not going to ride in the back of the bus or the streetcar. It was not a bus. So we, we walked. You walked and carried your groceries? And yeah, not groceries. The groceries, no, we yeah, didn't, we right, didn't go. Uh -huh. we didn't but whatever groceries. you were going shopping for. Whatever we were going to shopping for. And, and if there was a place that said that you couldn't try on, no, that's why mo many of the things that we learned, when, if there had to be something that we liked, we would have somebody make it for us because there was a store that they told us that you couldn't try on things. So you didn't, you didn't spend any money there. You didn't spend money where you could not get respect. No. Mm -mm. And, and that was one of the reasons also why Danville, the first state bank of Danville, Virginia, it was, has another, had another name. Then the members of the community got together and started Great First State Bank, which that was the bank where if you needed to borrow money, that's where you bought it. You didn't, be, and and I own every member of our, all of us own stock. We still own not very much stock in First State Bank. So you created uh, our own a community. situation, a, your own community, where your needs were met and and you could live with respect, and you didn't have to give in to. A lot of the segregation. You did not, no, no. And yet, when when Mary, when my mother had friends, I mean, there were people who did not agree. So when she brought Marion Anderson to, to Danville, there was segregation, at the, but you had it at the main hall, except that the white folks lived, they, they, they bought the tickets. She had a committee. They lived on, they sat on one side, and the black people sat on the other. Didn't sit in the family. So there were adjustments that were made even by the black and the white to the segregation. It, it's, it sounds as if it, it, um, there was a kind of understanding that, uh, that, the, diff that the races had in Danville that was, that was um, kind of an accommodation to being civil to each other, I guess. That's right, yeah. that's right. That's right, uh -huh. and 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 some of it, you know, civil, and then some of it were friends. 
There were friendships too. So, but that was true in many places in the South, not just Virginia. That uh, even in Mississippi, that was true, and in Alabama, and there are there are that that sir. Even with all of the evils and the things that we that I uh, went to <laughs> during the commission years, you know, to, to attack, even with. In other sections, at least they maybe not well known. But there, there were enclaves where the races managed to get along with each other. Absolutely. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, for young people who have you know a certain idea of of what segregation was like and and that it, it was all negative. Uh, it was, it, you know, black people were uniformly victimized. What you are, you are putting forward is a different picture. They were not uniformly victimized, you see. I mean, I, there was victimization, victimization, but it was not uniform. It was, it was within the segregated system. There were hospitals that were well run. There were banks. There were grocery stores. There were department stores. There were tailors. And I guess you probably, may, what maybe some people defined it as maybe for some of them there was poverty also, but there was also what is called somebody called the black woods bourgeoisie or some whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I never knew quite what that meant, but, but uh, middle class or whatever. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, now you mentioned I guess it was your grandfather who had to deal with the KKK. Right. My grandfather Frank. Right. Well, he didn't have he he they didn't bother him anymore. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And when you were growing up, oh no, no, there was that that element was no longer a factor in the area. The KKK. It, it may have been, but I I never had, knew of it. Mm -hmm. I mean I mean I mean I never encountered it. I'm not saying that the KKK did not at some point march around somewhere in Danville, Virginia. I'm sure they did not march on Raw Street. <laughs> but I don't. But I don't know. But you see, I was only there until I was sixteen, because then I went to Hampton, and then from then on, I, I have not lived. But no.